Hi there, I'm Jen Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio and join me as I take you through all the steps to make a fabulous cow print door hanger. Okay guys, we are starting with a round. This is 14 inch round. And um, I just want to show you how to determine um, what is like your best base coat for this particular foil. So this is our Buttercup um, cow print. And I'm showing you how it looks over white and how it's going to look over the MDF directly. So you can determine if you want to see, I feel like I see more detail of the design when I'm over a lighter color. So I'm going to opt to go ahead and paint my base coat. And I'm just going to use um, a craft acrylic uh, whitewash, really close to just being like a pure white. Uh, so we're going to throw some of that on here and just paint the surface. You can definitely get a roller out and roll your surface as well. That probably would go a little faster, but I had a foam brush here handy. So I figured we would just do it the easiest way I had available. <laughs> I probably put a little too much paint on here, but white doesn't opaque as well as some other colors do. So being a little heavier handed, I think is just gonna give me good coverage. So I'm gonna let this white paint dry it's going to take a couple hours i rather you go too long than not long enough to give your paint good dry time and i'm just trying to straighten out my brush strokes there so uh, we'll put this into the drying room and we'll be back for more okay our layer of white acrylic has dried it's not completely perfect but i think our foil is going to hide any of those imperfections and if you're not sure you could always lay the foil over the top and just see if any of your highs and lows in your paint job could possibly make a difference. And I really don't think it's going to. So isn't that gonna look so cool though? Oh, love this foil. Again, this is the Buttercup cow print. Okay, so that's just a way that you can at least take a look and make sure that these little areas here that I can kind of see an imperfection are not going to affect it. If I felt that they were going to possibly make a difference in the transfer, I would go ahead and put another coat of my acrylic on and again, wait for that to dry. Uh, but we're gonna move forward. We are going to grab our Artsy Bill Embellishments foil adhesive and roll on a full layer, okay? When I'm working on big projects like this, even though it's 14 inches, I do like to use my um, low nap roller if I can get away with it, okay? So I normally always have <laughs> my uh, foil ad adhesive loaded on a roller and I just wrap this up with press and seal um, and that way it's always handy to use and I'm not rinsing it out constantly. Okay, this is gonna be super hard for you guys to see anything. Hopefully you'll see maybe a sheen difference and that's possibly all you are going to see. Let me see, okay, there you go. You can see that there is a sheen difference on one side. When you are rolling over a very, very light color, sometimes it is a little bit more challenging, but uh, don't forget to definitely come back and roll through and try to make sure you're getting nice, straight uh, lines with your roller uh, lap marks and that you soften up some of the texture. Even though you can't see it really well, sometimes you can see that through your foil transfer. The longer you allow your foil adhesive to dry, the better. So I'm gonna let this sit for a couple of hours and then we'll be back to transfer that absolutely stunning cow print. Okay, we are ready to transfer our foil and I have the Buttercup foil laid out and ready to go. And just so you guys are aware, there is a transfer side and a carrier side. The transfer side is going to look more matte and the carrier side is definitely going to be shinier uh, because that is just plastic. If you're not sure which is the correct side, 
I'm going to teach you guys a little tape trick that works every time. And you can just grab a piece of tape. It doesn't matter if it's blue tape, scotch tape, anything. And just to confirm that you have the correct side, do a little pull off. If it's coming off on your tape, then you know you have the correct side. And that is our transfer side. Um, so there's a couple of ways that you can do this. There are times when my project uh, is a little bit larger than the foil or I feel it could be a little challenging for me to place it over the top. I can always put my project upside down on it, but um, I'm going to go ahead and go for this one, okay? Um, I'm also going to allow it to just go straight across, okay? And if you end up with any wrinkles, don't try to get those out, okay? I try to kind of center this because I want it the main focal point to be in the center. I also had my brush strokes going in that direction as well. And, and now we're going to do a full transfer here, okay, and just scrub. And I'm using a plastic bristled scrub brush, okay. I just heard a bubble, and if I see any bubbles, um, I try to pop these because sometimes the foil will move underneath and make the pattern move. So if you have a bubble that you catch, just go ahead and pop it. I'm using a pick tool from Harbor Freight. Those work great. And then let's continue to scrub. I'm scrubbing with a plastic bristled scrub brush. Uh, this is just like a nail brush. Okay, works great. <laughs> Um, and pretty much any size brush that you get will work. Just make sure they're, they're plastic bristles. I feel that the stiffer the bristle, the better. And then just scrub. Okay, once you feel like you've got the whole thing done, then you're going to come over here and just pull away the foil and double check as you are lifting. If it feels like there is something that didn't transfer, Lay the foil back down and just give it another try and just scrub in those areas. So you kind of want to be patient. Take your time. Don't be in a hurry um, because this way you can get as nice of a transfer as you can possibly achieve. And then I'm just going to go the other way just to make sure. And anytime you get a little crease or a wrinkle, sometimes you definitely have to go scrub those areas again. Okay, I think we look pretty good. Woohoo, look how fun that is. Okay, so I cut a second piece and I cut it the exact same size and section that I had already cut because now we're going to need to do a little bit of um, lining up the pattern, okay? And I am just going to see if I can find the repeat here and get this section to line up with what's already on here. Okay, that looks like that's pretty close, okay? And again, just scrub. So when you have something that is wider than the repeat, the majority of our foils are going to line up and repeat from side to side, okay? And again, we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to try to see if we can find the repeat. And there's a little bit of an overlap, which is fine, okay? And then just scrub to release the next section, okay? I want to get my toothbrush out because I'm trying not to scratch over what we've already transferred. Okay, I'm going to protect what I've already done with an extra 
my leftover, okay? Because I don't want to scratch the foil, okay? Once it's been transferred to the surface, if you scrub over the top of it and you don't protect it, you could possibly get some scratch marks. And I think I almost started to get some there, but there we go, okay? So it's going to repeat width-wise. Um, so again, if you've got something wider than the 12 inches, you now know how to seam your sections together. Uh, which is pretty easy. And then the next thing I'm going to do here is go ahead and clear coat this because as we move on and we're working on our next layers, I'm going to want to be able to glue to this and finish it off. So if I'm going to just go interior, we can use our final coat, okay, which if this is going to be something you're just going to use on the inside of your house, this is great. If you are planning to go exterior with it, then I'm going to suggest that you're going to do an extra layer and use the Masters Clear Supreme, which is exterior rated with UV protection. I'm going to be using the low gloss because our cow print doesn't need to be super bright and shiny. Just put the wiping pad over the top of the lid and just let that kind of pour into there, the sponge and then just brush it on. That is all you have to do to use the final coat. Now the final coat will dry in about 10 or 15 minutes depending on your weather and humidity um, and you can layer on several coats to protect this. And again, as I indicated, if you're going to go exterior then make sure you put an exterior varnish on as well or you can just protect it with final coat and use a clear spray as well. So our next part of this is we are going to be adding this cute little cutout, okay, that says be our guest. Okay guys, nothing special here. Just grab your cutout, whatever words you want to use. I just used a sponge brush and pounced on to the surface to get full coverage. Make sure that if you need it, put on a second coat. Um, using my pouncing technique uh, will make sure that your paint doesn't um, seep throughout the words and stays on the top surface. Okay, we're going to let everything dry and then we're going to come back and put everything together for you. Okay guys, it's time to put all of our final details onto our project. Um, I've just added a little piece of twine at the top. Uh, using my staple gun just so that we already have a hanger because I want to do that before um, I attach anything to this. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is just attach our Be Our Guest, okay? And a really easy way to um, attach any kind of wording that's super lightweight is to just go ahead and use our foil adhesive. So this is still our regular Artsyville Embellishments foil adhesive because it is a pressure sensitive glue, okay, adhesive. Um, you can use it to adhere your uh, projects together, okay? So if there's something that's heavier and it has a lot of weight to it, I wouldn't do it, but for lightweight items, uh, our adhesive works super great, okay? So this time, instead of, you know, putting it on thin and then trying to uh, soften the texture, uh, we don't want to do that. We're just going to put it on at full strength and make sure we've got really good coverage, which I feel like I need just a tiny bit more here. Let's get that bucket over here. Underestimated how much I need it, but that's okay. We can always grab more from our bucket. <laughs> okay, um, once I have the adhesive, okay, and I have full coverage on there, I'll let that sit for normally just a couple of minutes to tack up before I'll flip it over and put it on the project. So I'm just going to move that out of my way for the moment. And um, the next thing I'm going to do is show you guys how to make a really simple bow, okay? Now this is not my normal forte, okay? Not like I'm a big bow maker, but this easy bow is great because it has measurements on here. You have these two holders where you can um, put your ribbon into, okay, and that way it's being uh, pinched in the middle. You can figure out how long you want to make your loops, and this is going to be the tail, so I'm just going to leave that there. 
we're going to flip over the ribbon because we want the pattern on the outside edge. I'm going to pull it back through this middle part and I'm going to start I think with about a five inch bow, okay, and then making sure that's pinched in the middle. And then again, twist it so that your pattern is back on top. And again, starting off with a five inch. And I'm just going to do two loops of both, okay? And as far as your tails go, I think it's always better just to go ahead and cut them a little bit longer than shorter because you can always, always make them shorter, but you can't come back and make them longer. Okay, so that's my first ribbon. And that was pretty darn easy, you guys. And like I said, I am no pro at this, but this bow maker makes my life really simple. So again, we're coming in with a second ribbon here. Again, I'm going to make my tails probably longer than I need. Um, loop it over, and this time I'm only going to make this one about four inches. Now this ribbon is exactly the same on both sides, okay, so I don't have to keep twisting it every time, but you can if you want, or just make sure you've got it pinched really well in the center. And again, let's cut our tail and pull our tails out so that we've got our loops on either side and our tails going top and bottom. And then I'm going to come in here with a third ribbon. Now I like to try to always make sure that all three of my ribbons are different widths, but I just didn't have that handy of, a, <laughs> of the ones that I like. So my second and third ribbon are definitely the same size and I don't think it's going to matter, but normally I always try to go a little bit more narrow but I am going to bring this one in to where it's about the three inch. So we've got five, four, and then about three. Again, you're not going to have to flip this one because the pattern is the same front and back. Okay, I got my two loops, but I'm going to do a third loop for the fact that it helps you to hide the center of your bow. Okay, so I'm going to make another little loop, but I'm making it smaller. And then we're going to pull our tail back down here and cut that off as well. And again, I know I'm cutting them a lot longer than they are needed, but I can always adjust them coming shorter, okay? So now at this point, you can either use zip ties or just use pipe cleaner. Um, I'm kind of a fan of the pipe cleaner, but there are times where I'll we'll, we'll switch and go to um, a zip tie because you can get it super, super tight, okay? And then make sure you've got it held tight. Everything is still stacked together the way that we put it on our Easy Bow Maker. And then give it a really good twist as tight as you can. And then from here, you can start pulling your loops in the different directions, okay? And creating a fun bow. And you can open up your loops. Everything I'm working with is wired ribbon. So just depending on which direction. And then that center one, you see how I just opened it up and made it like cover the center? So that way you're not seeing all of that. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and cut my ribbons. I'm folding them in half and I'm going to angle them. Okay, and I always can never remember which direction to do this. Okay, and I think it's because I'm going the other direction. There we go. So I want to do what's called dovetails. Okay, and watch your fingers because the other day I about snipped mine. <laughs> And you can decide how long you may want to make these. You can leave some of them longer than others. Um, but this is going to give us a fun, uh, fun little bow here to attach to our project, okay? And I tried to pick colors and patterns that would go 
with everything and this is where I'm actually bringing in a little splash of my color because I picked the blue ribbon to kind of pop off of everything. So now we can put everything together. All right, let's get our towel door, okay? We've let the back of the Be Our Guest tack up. So now I can decide where I want to put it, and I think I'm going to go low. Um, we can also put our bow on there just to kind of give a visual of where maybe we want to see this. And I'm going to make sure it's on uh, the sign. I'm not going to let it hang off, okay? Get it where I want it, and just put some pressure on there. And then we can go back to our bow now. And I'm going to trim off the pipe cleaner, but I'm going to switch to my wire nippers because we don't want to ruin our scissors too much here. And just tuck that in the back. And you can always rearrange and play with this even after you have it on your project, okay, and just kind of play with everything. But I think we're just going to go ahead and using my staple gun, we're going to staple this on. We can always come in and add um, our hot glue if we need to use our glue gun. Okay, there we go. And then once it is stapled on here, now you can really play with your ribbon and fluff it up, open up all your loops and spread out the tails as well okay and if you feel like you need to trim something you can um, but you can definitely play with that so you guys there we go a finished project that is super cute where you can uh, put this on any door and welcome your guest so thank you guys for joining me thank you guys so much for joining me for the super fun project for a complete list of all your materials and supplies, check the description below and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our upcoming tutorials.